Okay, so now that we've uh, looked at the problem, f some of the problems, the problems uh, uh, that Macritus outlined, and the problem of formalism in the traditional approach, let's uh, try to understand what Macritus wants comparative politics to look like. He argues, uh, essentially, if there's one way to, to, to characterize it, it's for a system systematic approach. Uh, and another way of thinking about that is, is sort of a scientific approach. So we, we want to understand the sort of the systematic relationship between and among certain political phenomena. And by systematic, what we're saying is essentially that, that, that relationships, if they, uh, they, that they vary uh, amongst political phenomena, but, th but they vary in predictable ways. So if, it's, if, if, an, approach or if an approach is systematic, then we, we understand that, they, that we can predict or, or we can uh, understand it um, uh, quite well. So what is a systematic approach? Well, a couple of things. Well, I as I said, it's sort of scientific, and any sort of scientific science really relies on the, com uh, the collection and the compilation uh, of data. Um, and so once we, uh, uh, once we want, once we sort of agree that a uh, systematic approach is the way to go, then, as I said, the first step is to, is to collect data. And the way that data are collected are is, 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 you know, there are many ways, but essentially um, when we collect data, what we're looking to, 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 to collect are sort of, uh, at least implicitly, to understand that, that political phenomena fall into, into different categories. And the way that we choose to categorize uh, and conceptualize our data um, has to do a lot with what we think the world looks like. And what we think the world looks like has a lot to do with what our theories of the world um, tell us. So we'll get to that in a second. But So c uh, c um, collecting data really uh, means that you're implicitly looking to categorize these data, right? For instance, you know, think about um, uh, thinking about sort of economic growth, right? What what kind of data um, do we have to collect, and uh, what kind of categories uh, should we create for uh, the collection of these data? So, you know, one of the things that we can that we can think about is is looking at um, um, economic growth in 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 terms of um, um, the number of people sort of brought out of poverty, right? And uh, so, if that's how we want to uh, conceptualize economic growth, then uh, then we will create certain categories that maybe are different than if we were to conceptualize economic growth, say, simply on I don't know the number of billionaires or the number of millionaires, the number of individuals with say a television set or a, or access to a telephone or access to drinking water. Right? So these are all sort of different ways to categorize, but it really comes down to the collection of data. And once we have these data collected right, of, of various phenomena, we want to we want to understand the relationship the or the interrelationship between the data. Okay. And so if let's let's take a look at for instance um, something that's important uh, uh, that's been uh, relatively prominent in the news and and that is political violence, terrorism and other forms of political violence. Is there, you know, is there a relationship between um, something like economic growth and um, political violence. Well, in order to understand whether there is a relationship, first of all, we have to collect the data. As I said, we have to sort of collect data on on economic growth. What? How do we? How can we conceptualize data? How, how can we conceptualize the phenomenon economic growth? How do we conceptualize the phenomenon terrorism? Right? Um, and, you know. So these. I mean, these aren't. These are important, right? I mean, the 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 ideas. Uh, as to what constitutes economic growth and what constitutes terrorism and political violence are extremely important. Um, and, and there's obviously a lot of debate uh, 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 about that. But once we sort of have come to so some sort of agreement uh, on, on the data then the data itself, then we can uh, think about sort of the interrelationship of the data, right? What does the data what, what does the data show? Does it show a relationship? You know, does it show that as economic growth increases, political violence increases, or vice versa, right? Um, these and these these uh, oops these ca these categories are are what are called variables. So political violence, in this sense, is is what's called a variable, as is economic growth, and we want to understand, as I said, the interrelationship between those two uh, phenomena. Um, now, in order to understand that, we have to rely on theories. 
Now theories are sort of a set of of interlinked sort of propositions, right? Logically linked propositions that tell us something about the way that the world functions. And if we have good theories, then we can have uh, we can understand the relationship between uh, the data and the variables that we collect. Now, um, the a a, a good uh, theory is one that uh, can not only allow us to understand and explain why two variables are linked, why there's a relationship between the two, but it can also be used to sort of predict um, the future, right? To predict what would happen if, for instance, if uh, one of these variables were to change, right, in, in, in a particular country. Um, then, you know, what if, if we have strong theories, then we can uh, go a long way to, to really predicting um, the what we should find in, in the country uh, if if this the 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 value or the uh, of this variable were changed. Okay, so really it's about understanding the why and the how as opposed to only the where, when, what, and who as was the case in the, in the traditional approach which really relied on description and not a systematic analysis of, of social phenomena. So I will in the Lave in March um, lecture show you uh, an example of sort of theory building and modeling social processes.